Welcome to Roadmap, how to take three listings a week until you're ready for more. Each week, we interview a great agent who's consistently taking several listings every week, and we have an exciting guest today. We encourage you to take notes, apply as much of their knowledge as quickly as you can, and then use the copycat principle. If you're watching on Vulcan 7 or on the Lead Gen Facebook group, you'll have an opportunity to ask questions during the broadcast. Get your questions in early, folks. Let me uh, introduce my co-host. I can hear those airplanes going over, Carly. My <laughs> co-host from San Diego, Carly Hathaway. That's carlyhathaway.com. Hi, Carly. How's the real estate business? Hi, Ren. Hi, everybody. Real estate's awesome, as always. Good time to be a listing agent. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And before I introduce our guest today, I want to remind everybody we are simulcasting the show on the Lead Gen group. Lead Gen has... 51,000 members, so we have a very large audience there today as well. We will be pausing for a commercial message, commercial message, <laughs> during the show as a thank you to the Lead Gen folks. Let's welcome our guest today, and I'm excited about this, from the Bay Area, all around, up and down from San Francisco, all the way down to San Carlos, Mr. Alex Lair. Welcome, Alex. Welcome to the show. Well, thanks. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate you uh, getting me on here. I know it's not easy. You don't stand still very often. No, no, no. That's why I wear out the shoes. <laughs> That's it. You're <laughs> working hard or playing hard, and you do a lot of both, and it's it's quite a, quite exciting the life you live. Yeah. I, well, I, it works for me. Not for everybody, but it works for me. Good. Well, uh, I think a lot of people would like it to work for them. So yeah. what's the best way? Because you know, you're in an area where people refer business in and out all the time. You even mentioned you, know, you did a deal with uh, Josh Barker recently. So yeah. uh, so what's the best way for them to reach you to send you a, a, a listing referral or a buy referral or both? Sure. Sure. My company uh, is, again, I'm Alex, last name Lair, L-E-H-R. And the company is Lair Real Estate, and that's the same, obviously, same as my last name. So my cell number is 650-766-5300. So people are always welcome to call me there, 650-766-5300, or at uh, Alex, A-L-E-X, at LairRealEstate.com. And it sounds like they could go to Lair Real Estate. Dot com and really learn a lot about you and your setup and as well. Sure. L-E-H-R. L-E-H-R. Perfect. Good. So, folks, send those referrals in. All right. Good deal. Good. You've been doing this for a while. It's uh, 34 years on the sand clock right now. <laughs> and you, right out of the gate, you did pretty darn well. So, uh, this, this, you know, it didn't take you 34 years to build that up. You've been living the, a very exciting life for quite a while now. Yeah, 30, yeah I, I'm about 2,300 transactions right now. Wow. wow. And what's your goal for this year? Uh, this year is basically it was 115 to wind up at, uh, at, 100, uh, at 150 million. Wow. Good for you. And what yeah. kind of what kind of commission is that? Well, at that point, at, at, uh, it puts us literally right at just about four million bucks. You know, by the time you, you take all the, the the numbers out of it, but I'm I'm short on my goal candidly. But I'll you know I'll, I'll explain that as as we go. Good, good, but, good. So you just run a lot of advertising, and then the calls come in, right? <laughs> <laughs> See these knuckles? They are worn from banging on <laughs> doors and people. Knock out! You've knocked on a lot of doors. Good, good. Yeah. good. So what's a, what's the morning look like? I, I watched a little video clip of you you did six years ago, and you were uh, starting around seven forty-five. Is that still the case, or still still to this day? And part of what I figured out was this. And I have bets, or I have uh, hundred dollar bets with people in the office that every day we show up at seven thirty, and then we we work through our schedule. And, and the first the first half hour is nothing but working on scripts and and objection handlers. My team, the way we're set up is I've got two guys that full-time knock on doors. And so they're out on the electric segways. Oh, cool. That's fine. Uh, yeah. And they knock on doors every day. They hit 30,000 doors a year each. And so what winds up happening is, so they'll come back with their, their biggest objection that they had for the week. Or the one thing, if I, if I ask them, give me something that where you paused. Because mm -hmm. if they paused before they responded, then it was really something internally that was going on with them. So we work on their objections. We work on something that's that made their confidence is not there. So I make sure that they're actually feeling 100% prepared. Because remember, sales is a transference of energy. 
and dogs and sellers smell fear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if there's fear at all, they're going to smell it. So automatically they got to just be like, man, I am so glad you brought that up. And then just go right into it and just be easy and comfortable with it. Yeah. So, so when you're saying wherever they paused, that indicates it wasn't unconscious competence. They had to stop and think about what they were doing first. Well, it, well, exactly. If you watch my eyes and I go, well, oh, I'm glad you asked that. Uh, and that, that momentary eye change, mm -hmm. that's the dead giveaway. Yep. So at that point, if you if you can't run that one rails on on any objection handler, the people will feel it, and mm -hmm. it's not what you're saying; it's what they'll feel or what they'll sense. So I hear practice, 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 practice as part of your team. They they have to, and then also we also do a, another thing where we put them on uh, on there's facial recognition software where you can literally a, a person's face will prop up for a nanosecond. So they, it, it requires that they trust their subconscious to really read what's going on with that, with that person. So instead of being like, gosh, I don't know why they're saying that, their subconscious, are, our, our guys, their subconscious has already read the cues. And so we train them to make sure that they're not just reading their words, they're reading their body language, they're reading every single detail about the property, about them. So they already know before they've opened their mouth who the people are. Wow. Wow. That's intense. That sounds really amazing. I know. I'm going to work on his team. I really do. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like, it's like, you know, everybody leaves clues. There's watch poker players wear dark glasses and hoods mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. psychology, they'll, they'll give tells. Right. Everybody at their front door has a tell. Are you reading the front? Are you reading the front door? And are you reading the tells? Mm -hmm. so you that's, guys, that's what my guys are trained to do. You guys are paying attention to this at a very, 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 very high level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very forward thinking. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, it's worth every bit of it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sounds like it. Yeah. So, um, so then, so, okay, so you have two guys that are door knocking. And then are you on the phones in the morning after your 730 role plays or? Yes. Yesterday, actually, I spent the entire day. I was on the phone for nine hours. And I was oh just God. getting through because it was a marathon day. I had a lot of people I needed to get to and I had to make sure that everybody was touched and loved on and they were connected with. So I, I went through both prospecting and lead follow-up. It was, yesterday was just all stacking the deck and honestly, more importantly, was getting rid of a lot of it. Okay, okay. Yeah. So you've got a, yeah, you have a pretty big database at this point. You know, the irony is, I gotta be candid, is I sucked at my database for many, many years. And a lot of people left the area, so I was always like, oh, they're gone. I don't need to worry about them. But that was, a, that was a, honestly a, a, a tactical error and a mistake on my part for not staying in better communication because we still knew a lot of people here. So we've, you know, so that's an area that we really worked on to, to develop a better continuity and contact even when they leave. Because seven out of every 10 buyers or seven out of every 10 sellers we have are leaving the area. Yeah. So, so what is your... So what's your plan to follow up with them? Do you, are you strategically doing it like quarterly or how are you doing that now? Well, I have, I have the raving fans in my phone to where I know that there's certain people I can just call and they were raving fans. Then I have others where I know that we nailed it for them and I would probably not get an ice cube if I was drying up in the desert. So, <laughs> you know, and we know that that's, that's just the way it is. So the raving fans, I'm always calling. I'm in the car calling them. If I see that, if I see their company did well, I'll call them and just go, hey, man, I saw this happen. So I try to remember details about their lives. And so I'm, mm -hmm. hey, I know it's, I, I saw on Facebook something happened with your dog. What's going on? You know, so I'll call them about random things in general just to stay connected on an interpersonal level versus just always being, hi, I'm your local realtor. Can I sell your house? And who do you know? I want to be like, hey, I hadn't talked to you in a while, but I saw that, you know, your dog got run over. What the heck happened? Uh -huh. I told you you shouldn't have moved. Why don't you move back? You know? Yeah. You just being playful with them. So uh -huh. nine hours, that's a lot of touches. So you're yes, really making, so you're doing quite a business there. Yeah, yesterday was a lot. Yesterday was a marathon day. Mm -hmm. okay. You have some serious stamina, that's for sure. Well, thank you. <laughs> was that planned so, for like Monday? Because uh, some people do this Monday marathon thing, the idea where you do a, 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 a very long Monday. Is that kind of front load the week? Is that the strategy or does that just happen to have happened? Well, yesterday happened to have happened because I was supposed to be gone hunting and we wound up succeeding early. So I wound up coming back and having an extra day. And I said, I'm not going in the office. I'm just going to spend the entire day clearing my subconscious because all of us, if you're in business, 
There's mm-hmm. people you should have gotten back to and people you want to get back to, but you don't schedule enough time. So mm-hmm. make sure that yesterday was the subconscious clearing day. Because remember, it is an emotional business. And if you feel like crap because you're not getting back to people, that will hurt you in the long run. So yeah. there is, you really got to connect with that and understand that, man, I got to clear my soul here and just be like, I talked to everybody. I came away last night feeling like I was light. Yeah, but in such a good way because it really does bother you and you keep thinking about it. It's like, when you have a stack, it's like when you have a stack of things to do and you keep putting that one thing off. It's like, just do it. Just get to it. That's exactly it. That's true. Yeah. So it sounds like you have a huge database, but are you still reaching out to expireds and FISBOs? Well, uh, ironically enough, in our market, we don't have a lot of uh, expireds. You know, in some right. towns we'll have, like in one town I've got a listing in right now, there's six properties for a town of 35,000 people. Mm-hmm. So there's not a lot of expires, but there are some. Mm-hmm. So we, we, I haven't been focused on them, but I do a lot of head knocking, which is following up on the guy, the people that my guys go out and knock on doors. So okay. I can knock on their head after. Okay. So, you know, so we do that. And then I'm also, I still call a lot of probates, estates, return. Okay. So you're doing probates and estates and the door knocking as part of the team business. Probates, estate. What about divorce? Is that, do you work that or? We haven't been working the divorce, the divorce segment so much, but I, I just, I actually, uh, I wrote a book and it was, uh, I just wrote a book for regarding estates and trust. So we're working a lot more in that area as well you know, deep, diving deeper into the, the, the attorney realm, and then we'll expand. That's right. You wrote that probate book. I forgot, I, I'd heard that. Yeah. So you're, you're doing tons of transactions. You're running a team, and you wrote a book on the side. No big deal, right? Yeah, well, it's, you know, you're, like you, you said it earlier, you always got to be figuring out what, where, the, where the puck is going to be, not where it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. So let me ask you this. So your team, who are they door knocking? Are they just, are you guys picking a neighborhood? Are you doing just sold, just listed? How do you decide where they're knocking? That's a great, that's actually a really, really, really good question. Because too often agents will pick an area like, I like that area. It just, you know, it's a nice area. And I'm like, I don't like any area. I love numbers. So the okay. first thing I do is I go, we start looking at an area. We set, look at how many homes are selling. How many are on the market currently? What the list price to sales price ratio is? What the average days on market are? And then from there, when our guys go into those areas, the first thing they have to do before they ever even touch a door, they have to know every school, every middle school, and every high school, and where those feed to. Which ones have the better grade point average? Which blocks feed to those schools, and which ones transition? Because if they're going to walk in a neighborhood and not know that, the neighbors immediately will understand that these guys are foreigners. Get them out of our, you know, get them out of my swamp. Yep. So, you know, first thing yes. we do is make sure when they go, well, my kids go to Dubinac. Oh, so they'll be moving on to X, Y, or Z school. And then are they going to private schools from there? So they can have a conversation that's not like, oh, well, that's nice. So when do you plan on moving? Mm-hmm. They're having a conversation able to go do it. It's more personable. So look at all the homework they, uh, they do before they ever go into a specific area. They do, if it meets their criteria and they have to internalize all this information about the area so they can connect with the, uh, with the owner of the home. So mm-hmm. folks, if you're watching this on replay, rewind about four minutes and play that over and over and over, right? Make a list because that's what yeah. you have to do to do it right. Yeah. That's great. So then they're also, they also have a lot of confidence when they're knocking on the door because they've done so much homework. They feel confident going into it and you've role played. They know how to overcome objections. They're mm-hmm. reading body language. Sounds like a great plan. Well, it works. It does work because my guys literally knock on everybody from billionaires to beginners. And mm-hmm. you know we've got some clients that are the titans of tech and they've, uh, and my guys have been knocking on their door. Yeah. And those are tough guys, especially if they're like, you know, really, really introverted and they're all techie. They're hard to, you know, get through to. And that's a lot of your demographic in NorCal. Well, absolutely. So even all of our scripts, all of our scripts, we break them down into four personalities. So can you deliver your script to an amiable? Can you distribute, distribute, deliver the script to an analytical and driver and express it? So every one of their scripts, they have to be able to speak to that language. So when they're talking to an analytical, they're going, so how does that make you feel? They're not going to ask about feelings to an analytical. The first thing is, so, I mean, statistically, that makes sense, doesn't it? And practically, that's, yeah. going, to up, that's going to lead us to the outcome we want. Mm-hmm. Very smart. That's amiable. It's going to be like, and we know that that's what really feels right, doesn't it? <laughs> it is. I love, 
So true. Yeah. So they got to speak the language of the people they're speaking to, but they got to read that language before they open their mouth. Yeah, they got to read it quick. You are prepared. You study. You, I've, and, and as long as I've known you, you've surrounded yourself by uh, various mentors. Mm -hmm. Happened. Are you still involved in any kind of coaching or anything like that with any of the various organizations out there? Oh yeah, oh yeah. And I, I'm still, you know, uh, attending a lot of Mike's uh, retreats or Mike's seminars, and I'm coached by, you know, uh, Kevin at Mike well, with Mike Ferry. And I say Mike, but it's Mike Ferry. And then, uh, and then I'm also doing Tony Robbins. I work with Tony Robbins quite a bit through his Platinum Partnership. So I'm, you know, you constantly remember this. Most people forget about this. Our brain is like a well, and if the, if the level drops, poison can seep in. But if the brain is constantly overflowing with good thoughts, good ideas, good plans, everything else, poison can't get in. It's like trying to shove poison down a fire hose. It'll fly back out. It can't ever get in. So I never allow the opportunity for contamination to get in. So I make sure, and it's part of a plan, again, to make sure that I'm constantly filling it with good stuff. All That's great. So in addition to your Mike Ferry coaching and addition, in addition to Tony Robbins, what else are you putting in to fill your well? Well, I mean, constantly a lot of, you know, uh, tons of podcasts. But, you know, the, the, the thing about it is this. If you break all the crap we're hearing right now, there's a lot of noise. And, mm -hmm. and I heard this on a podcast recently, and it made a lot, a lot of sense to me. Because the guy goes, they, uh, uh, Tim Ferriss had asked the guy, he says, what, what books are you reading? He says, Tim. I go back and reread the same three books every year because I haven't perfected them yet. Why do I want to keep confusing myself? So, I love it. And it was a simple idea, but this guy's a genius that he was interviewing. And it was a really good point to where I'm like, if you went back and read Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich, you know, The Richest Man in Babylon, all, went back to a lot of the classics and just really internalized those. It's kind of like, it's, a, it's like going to church. Mm -hmm. Sunday, you couldn't remember to be good. You had to go back again. <laughs> yeah. That, right? yeah. You have to keep but, drilling yourself, drilling yourself. Yeah. I, I've, I've, I've read a lot of Tim Ferriss books over and over and over, actually on audio and over and over and over because he's good too. Tim's yeah. great. Tim's really good. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you obviously you have a really strong mindset. You have a positive attitude. Um, are you doing affirmations in the morning or anything like that? Yeah, absolutely. And there's a, I have a, I have a list of who I am, you know, so, so basically every morning I'm, I'm looking at who I am because don't forget the world is going to constantly, and people get it all hung up on, on uh, affirmations like their woo woo stuff or whatever. But if, if you don't remind yourself who you are, doubt will creep in. And as I explain to my guys all the time, think, look at this as an analogy. When you're, Every day, doubt is a shadow that is with you, and it never leaves. So doubt will never, ever, ever, ever go away in your life. So if you think it's going to, you're absolutely mistaken. But mm -hmm. the difference is this. If I'm walking into the light every day towards my goals, towards my dreams, towards my visions, towards everything, doubt is the shadow that's behind me. But as soon as I turn around and start retreating from everything I want, now that same light is passing the doubt in front of me. I can see that shadow. So your job is to never, never, never allow yourself to turn around. Because at that point, that's when the doubt, that's when it's visible, and that's when it gets scary. Keep moving mm -hmm. your goals. And part of that is reminding yourself. So mm -hmm. that's what the I am's are. I'm strong. I'm powerful. I'm determined. I'm focused. I am a man of my word. Every day, God manifested power, light, and glory through me. I'm peace. I'm joy. I'm love. I'm abundance. It just keeps going. So I know. Well, there's a good example, folks. He's got that internalized. And you live an amazingly exciting life. A lot of people, they're off, and then they don't do anything for a couple of days. They sit around. You've got a lot of adventure going on. I mean, racing cars with Tony Robbins and Monaco and all this. What? All this exciting stuff you do. You, yeah. I mean, you're, you are embracing. I mean, I, uh, if you go to LairRealEstate.com and look under, what does it say? Uh, after hours. Is that what it says? After it's, it's off the clock, I think. Off, off the clock or something like yeah. that. It, it shows pictures of places that he's going, things he's doing. I mean, you live an exciting life. <laughs> we, we have fun. We have fun. That, I mean, and when you do something like that and then you come back, isn't it a little easier to dive into nine hours of calls? Oh, you, you actually want to again. So, you know, because it, it pays for all that good fun. <laughs> that it does. That it does. Now you're really connected to what, what the outcomes are. 
That's it. You know, work to live or live to work, you know, which, which you know, pick one. <laughs> exactly. I know. I know. I, I've watched him on and off being interviewed over the, a number of years, and I was like, man, he lives an exciting life. i got to yeah. up my game. I've got to up my game. Oh, yeah. Well, Let's go drive race cars in Monaco anytime. <laughs> my, my dad's 93, and the one thing he said a long time ago, he goes, you know, if, if you – Quit having a reason to get up. You'll stop getting up. Mm -hmm. And he was strictly getting up just to go to work every day. I mean, that, that's fine and good. But, and I'll, I'll digress for a moment and, and go down off on a tangent here. When I turned 50, which was, I'm 53 now, so about three years ago, our, our production was up around, right around, hovering right around 100 million. And so from there, though, I was sitting there going, is this really, really, really what I'm after? And so what I wound up doing was I spent literally two years really trying to figure out what I was after. Was it, did I want to build a bigger business? Did I want more money? Did I want, what was I really after? And, you know, so I wound up going back and read, and my wife and I really sat down and played with our goals quite a bit and, you know, what we were trying to accomplish. And we wanted more time and more, more experiences. So for that reason, that's when we moved back to, I, I made a commitment last year was I was going to work three weeks a month. And so I've done that all the way last year and all the way this year as well. So it's, it's developing the business and developing the time to where I can go create those experiences. Because then when your clients are around you and you've just had a great time and you're doing some cool stuff, it really, really helps you with higher energy. And remember, sales is a transference of energy. You know, so, mm -hmm. the, so the higher the energy you are, the more excited you are, people sense that. And versus like, well, yeah, I can, I can, I can sell your house, you know. <laughs> you bet, but, so you work three weeks you're off one week you do something amazing you come back you work three weeks and that actually probably the yields probably higher right than it would be if you didn't take that time well if you keep cranking a battery when your car is not starting mm -hmm. it doesn't get better and everybody keeps saying well i'll just keep cranking i'll just keep cranking so what's our what's the term in real estate i'll just crank it out i'll crank it out i'll crank it out mm -hmm. well if the battery dies you can think you're doing it. All you're doing is holding the key after a while and nothing's here. So if you don't go back and recharge the battery, you're, you're wasting your turn. Yeah, agreed. Really good point. But so you've, so the, what really works, because a lot of people don't know when to start, when to stop. And, and you've got this down very exact. So it's very systematic. And yeah. as our own boss, I mean, what can you tell people that are watching? Because right now, you know, Next month, you know, in October, what your what days you'll be on, what days you'll be off, when you'll be in town, when you'll be out. It's already pre-planned, right? And you, you probably have the whole year mapped out. But a lot well, of people don't you, are not doing. You can't it. see it. You can't see it in my office, but I see right there. That's a flow chart. Everything that happens in our business, and then over on that wall is the that's the back edge of the calendar, and that's the year ahead. So this is this year all the way up to December thirty first. I can tell you every day where I'll be, what days I'll be off, and then. Uh, then all the way into next year, we'll have that already planned by the end of November. All of next year will be laid out. I'll know where I'll be, what days I'll be. And then I have floater time in there too. Because again, my wife and I like to play a game called the Yes Game. So if people contact us and say, hey, we're, we're going this, you want to take a trip for a day or two or whatever it is. We have floater time in there that we can go say yes to. Because we want to, you know, when my life flashes before my eyes one day, I want it to take a while. Yeah. You know, great stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So the yes game, yeah, you were, uh, so the yes game for people that are watching is where you, you say yes without pausing or thinking about it. You just say yes and you go do things you might not normally do. Well, absolutely. Because if there's two things that happen, everybody plays, and this is, I think, the killer of the soul. It's a lot of people sit there and they'll go, well, do you want to do this? And go, well, let me check on it. And, you know, I, I'll, I'll get back to you. And they live in this area of ambivalence. And that is, that is the killer of the soul. So for me, either it's a hell yeah, or it's a no. Somebody says, hey, do you want to do something? I'm like, either, and I think about it for a minute. I go, I go hell yeah, I want to do that. So as soon as I say hell yeah, it's yes. Then it's like, you're going. So I got a buddy of mine that just said, hey, you want to go race in Africa in 2020? And he goes, want to go race motorcycles in Africa? I go, set the date, I'm going. 
Next year, oh, I'll be in Romania God. racing for a week. Nice. And you just have to walk over to your year at a glance and with your marker and fill it in. And, you know, and it's three months ahead. You know when you're going to do it, and it's all mapped out. Lawrence Papaleos asks the question, have you always been structured and systematic? And what advice can you give an agent who struggles with following a structured game plan? Well, and the, the answer is yes, because I had a German dad, and he was you know, pretty much like, you know, you, you do certain things a certain way and very systematic. So I, I run like a military without ever having been in the military. So number one is I read a lot of books on the military and how they structure and why they structure. And then the second thing was this. The structure is easy when your dreams are important. So for me, I like that, that. Is, you know, structure is real simple when I'm excited about what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. If, if I sense myself getting off schedule, then I know that there's something in my life that's bullshit. And mm -hmm. I'm not, excuse the expression, but I mean, it's, it's literally then at that point, I'm, I'm lying to myself some more. So why am I not playing full out? So, mm -hmm. so that's, that's one of those things that structure becomes, because it's like, I wouldn't leave on a road trip without having some roadmap to get there. And for right. me, structure is the roadmap to get me to where I want to go. Because part of it is this, if you think of it this way, the ability, my current circumstance was a result of my past habits. So all I'm doing right now is installing the habits of the guy that will achieve the goals that I want. So that's all I work on every day is new habits that will achieve the outcomes that I'm after. Okay. So that's, like that's the structure. Just building those habits. And yeah, and if you're ahead of that exciting life, how could you not go do something so exciting and then not and do your nine hours of calls? Mm -hmm. well, yeah. And if you love what you do, calling those people probably is not so bad because you know them all. Well, so and, and, you know the part, and, and that's it, too, is where a lot of the time where I get the, if I don't talk crap to people, like I just start giving them a bad time about everything. And then if I don't, they're like, is everything OK? And I'm like, oh, my God, I forgot to insult you. You know, but I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, like I forgot to cap on you about something and make a joke or screw around with them. And. That's the game. It's, it doesn't have to be this very, you know, uptight mm -hmm. or arrangement or, or relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Let me get yeah. a couple of questions. Yvette Strickland, uh, I'm going to answer it for her. She goes, how can I get this recording? It's helping me so much. He's going to be blessed for sharing this information, but he does to be successful at no cost to us. Well, it's priceless because I'm paying with my time. Thank you for having him and sharing with us. Go to uh, Vulcan7.com forward slash roadmap and register and we'll send you a copy of the show uh yvette uh if we want to make sure you get a copy everybody that's registered gets a copy after the live show and then um uh vincent napoleon says if you were to start a successful real estate business at you know that you're you're at age 60 what are the top three things you would do immediately and regularly what you know somebody's just starting in the business what would you tell them or you know two or three things that they should do immediately to get in the right direction. Okay. And that's, that's a, that's a really, really, really good question. And I'm going to give you a simple thing and this is for everybody. And I don't care who you are listening, watching, hearing this 10 years from now, it doesn't really matter. But remember this, eliminate the word T O O two. eliminate that word altogether because the word that what that comes into is this, I am too old. I am too young, I am too tall, I'm too short, I am too fat, I'm too thin, I'm too smart, I'm too uneducated. Everybody has a two in their freaking life. Kill that epic word as fast as you can because it will kill everything you're after. So number one, I love the fact that you're 60 and starting a company because now you're finally wise enough to do something with a company and build it. Then yeah. somebody who's starting at 20, congratulations. You're now, you're not too young. You're now finally in a position to where you can apply your energy and achieve everything you want. Mm -hmm. so it doesn't matter. Two is out of the equation first and foremost. Now from there, once you've accomplished the, the, the idea, you are going for it. Commit. You know, and you've heard the old burn your boats. That's fine. Whatever you want to call it, that's great. But the most important thing is figure out what's exciting you about doing it. Is it the connection of the people? Is it the fact that you're going to build something? Is it, because don't forget Tony Robbins 101, when you start a business, you're either an entrepreneur and you want to have a business that runs without you, or you're an artist and you love to create. And if you love to create and build a business based around that, 
understand that that is what you're after and then go create the coolest freaking business but quit beating yourself up about i'm supposed to be an entrepreneur i'm supposed to be an artist I'm supposed... find out what fulfills you and go do that if that's what you're after because most people get in this conflict and then they wind up burnt out because they they were just beating the crap out of themselves versus understanding what is their real their real lane so again, check out Tony Robbins if you want to find out from Business Mastery. There's some great work there. That is a great program. I love that uh, Business Mastery course. That was Absolutely. amazing. Yeah, Absolutely. I took that as well. And whoa, oh, what a gold mine! What a gold mine that is. Um, you know, this has been just exciting. This is exciting, and 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 I know for myself, I will be playing this show. Uh, at least two or three times to watch because there's a, there's a lot of valuable information here. And I know uh, yeah. this, this is one, this is one of our shows that'll get a little viral and get spread around. I really want to thank you so much, Alex, and, and uh, on all the stuff you built and then you're a good model for a way to operate a real estate business and have an exciting life. Well, yeah. Appreciate well, you sharing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and thank you read, so much, Alex. It's and I want to read a couple show. things. So, folks, if you're watching on Vulcan 7, you want to get involved with the Lead Gen Facebook group, they are at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash objections. They hand, uh, you can actually see a copy of our show there as well. Also, I mentioned, I want to thank uh, Aaron Wittenstein, who runs it. He has a program called expiredmasteryelite.com. And finally, if you're watching on Facebook and you're not yet involved with Vulcan 7, make sure to sign up at vulcan7.com forward slash lead gen for a special deal. And then Alex, the secret, he mentioned ice cream in the desert. And he has a secret that when he takes a listing, he, after he's made all his calls, and he's made nine hours of calls, he goes and gets some delicious in the fridge. He keeps it in the Delicious Grater's Mint Chocolate Chip <laughs> available all over North America. This is the only one for taking listings. All the other flavors are for buyers. This is the one for taking listings. If the listing is slow to sell, dig a hole in the front yard and bury it upside down and sell quickly. So I want to thank everybody for being here. And next week is our highlight show, season three highlights. So you're not going to want to miss that next Tuesday, the highlight show. Thanks again, everybody, for being here. Thank you, Thanks, Alex. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Thank Early. you so much, Alex. See everybody you, next week. Thank you.